I am Haroldo Ayub Dargel. I am a psychiatrist from Brazil. I come here today to present our work in staging in bipolar disorder and in schizophrenia, and work that is a collaborative project between Brazil and France, coordinated for, by Flavio Kapzinski in Brazil and here by Professor Marion Leboyer. Merci Marion. Bonjour à tous. Euh, donc, euh, comme Marion j'ai dit, je suis Haroldo Dargel, c'est bon comme ça, je suis psychiatre hein, au Brésil et maintenant on développe euh, recherche en collaboration internationale. Donc aujourd'hui, euh, la propos de la conférence fondamentale, c'est de parler de modèles qui ont commencé à développer au Brésil et ont euh, été venus ici pour développer. Maintenant, mon stage en français s'est terminé, je vais changer pour anglais. Parce que, ok, si vous ne pas comprendre, après on a... <laughs> Merci. And before we start, I organize uh, a summary just to, to organize our, our discussion today, an introduction that we will talk about an overview of clinical staging. After that, we will focus on clinical staging in psychiatry, but most in our model. After that, I go to um, perspectives for staging in psychiatry disorders, and then we will close this uh, discussion with take home message. In medicine, as a classical view, we, have, we, we think about etiology. We think also about pathophysiology and syndrome. If we got the example for cardiology, for the, the heart, the heart to be a pump, or oh, it's a pump, to pump enough blood to the body, okay? If that pump doesn't function well, there is a decompensation. It's okay. And also we could think then, why this heart decompensate? Maybe it's a problem in the valves, or in the electric conduction, or also in the, the, the muscle of the heart. We could also link pathophysiology on that, thinking about maybe there is an autoimmune pathology, myocardium, or also a toxic, eff toxic effect. Then, in cardiology, thinking about that, when the heart decompensates, they classify the decompensation as, for example, congestive heart failure. That is class level one, two, three, and four, based on the decompensation of the heart and the clinical, most important aspect of the patient. In psychiatry, nowadays, we are based on syndrome to understand what our patients are present and suffering. Then we could, I will start on that with this reflection about nosology and psychiatry illness to introduce a staging. Regarding, uh, regarding that, about a syndrome, Kraepelin uh, developed, uh, observing their many depressive patients that the syndrome that disease evolve like uh, it pro progress linked with mood episode and also that mood episode it's uh, they come uh, later more uh, autonomously than the early episodes and also could be um, can I say could lead could be induced by a stressor looking in 2008 Flavio adapted a model, the allostatic load that comes from the professor Bruce McQueen from endocrinology. We adapted that model for bipolar disorder, thinking about that, that mood episode, the more mood episode, you know, then this is mania or depression. It's related, it's increased allostatic load. What is allostatic load in a practical way for us psychiatry? Is the price that the body, also the brain, pays to maintain the homeostasis, that equilibrium. Then, also, episodes, as I read uh, talk, increase this allostatic load. 
decrease neurotrophic factor in the brain like BDNF and increase peripheral oxidative stress. Another thing that is important that we see in that model that substance abuse also lead to uh, co contribute to the increasing of allostatic load. What we see in patients, more episodes, psychiatric comorbidities, and also daily stressor. That patient, there is a problem along of the course of the illness in the cognitive dysfunction and also the in functional impairment and social impairment that we see. Going further, he, Flavio, uh, thinking about that episodes could be toxic in bipolar disorder. And then he pulled, uh, combined biomarkers in oxidative stress pathways, inflammatory, as combining this, he built an index with systemic toxicity and compare to control to bipolar in remission or euthemic patient, depression, mania, and with a group with a, a positive control, with a group with patient with sepsis, that for us in medicine is one, one of the most toxic state. What he, he found, this is a preliminary study, he found that, for example, many patients that we see in, in, in red, that is more than 75% that is, you know, uh, increase uh, systemic toxicity compared to toxic to patient. There is a hundred percent that is in, in systemic toxicity. Also in patient with depression, but not as high as in manic patient. Then in the brain, we think about the compensation. For example, we have done recurrent mood episode that could may, could induce mitochondrial dysfunction, also synaptic apoptose, which means that could lead a brain rewiring, like if you think about a readaptation, you know, like that, as this happened. And then this, this cycle, you see the patient function, have the impairment in functional, in cognition that we see in clinical, and is difficult to cope for, with stress, for example, you know, intensive. And this is close the cycle that it's, uh, you know, could induce, decrease the threshold for a new episode. If you, we look now, we are preparing in Brazil, measuring apoptosis in bipolar patients, cell apoptosis, that is cell death. In bipolar patients, compared to control, we have the early apoptosis. Following that, they recently published another study with our group in Brazil, that measure uh, the stress response in lymphocytes from eutemic patient according to stage of bipolar disorder. This is, is the, these two proteins that inside of the endoplasmatic reticulum and that is implicated, for example, in the pathway of mood stabilizer like lithium. Then uh, what uh, they, they, they found that if compare patient in early stage of bipolar disorder to controls, there is no uh, significant difference. But early versus late is really different. And then what we could think about endoplasmatic reticulum, this is implicated in cell resilience, how the cell support is stress. You go further, the percentage of cell death in that same group of patients comparing early, late, and control. That is difference, early versus control, and also early versus late. That is a really interesting finding, thinking about cell resilience. Going further, we talk about, for example, mitochondria in that cycle that we, we already seen, the, the brain. Mitochondrial function, if you go to the pathway of oxidative stress, T bars that it's, I will re, uh, reinforce that it's a, a measurement of lipid peroxidation in the cell membrane. And then this is also that is different between, significant difference between bipolar and bipolar control and also 
between the schizophrenic patient. This is preliminary data that is in progress there. It's a really interesting finding that is marker for inflammation, TNF, alpha, prostaglandins, uric acid. Then, maybe it's important that some pathways, peripheral pathways uh, and markers in bipolar disorder. Because we know, for example, that are linked the shared pathway with comorbidity, clinical and also psychiatric comorbidity. And thinking about something, you know, in more clinical, more close to us in the, the clinical practice, we, we ran a meta-analysis that is coming in general clinical psychiatry next month, and uh, about C-reactive protein alteration in bipolar disorder. That is, uh, we, we study, uh, we included in that uh, meta-analysis 11 studies. What do we see, we see here? We know that C-reactive protein, a well-established marker of risk in cardiovascular disorder. You know, for example, patient that there is, and we see after that, patient that have uh, increased CRP, more, uh, increased more than three, they are a moderate, they have moderate risk for cardiovascular disorder, just to give a, a general um, example. And we, we come back. We run a subgroup analysis in, in that, uh, and that we see that, for example, thinking about episodes that is really um, associated with manic and also with the whole fa phase of disease because to link to that is important of toxicity of episodes. ES, that's effect size of 0.73, it's uh, considered a strong effect size with a significant difference. That patient also, inflammatory pathways in, 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 in peripheral, is a nice study that look you know, and a huge general population study that it's linked with late onset of schizophrenia, CRP levels, okay? And then what is interesting that in, in the, the fourth quartile, that is the you know, highest level of CRP, the, the cumulative incidence is 1.5, you know, uh, during, the, during the, the life to, to develop schizophrenia in general population. Then we could just um, trying to, to put together our discussion today that there is a pathways that could be um, important in bipolar disorder, thinking about that illness progress, you know, and we have early and late stages. Then mood episodes that we already talked also link it to illness duration and that is the pathway that we already comment mitochondrial just to 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 summarize oxidative stress neurotrophins like bdnf inflammation crp tnf look that the this is a graphic representation is not an analysis but this is the how illness progress you know link associated to more or less mood episodes and also during time, and also look the cognitive and functional impairment. They are really sick, and then this is an approach that we could think about the stage and also how to treat why develop stage pathophysiology in bipolar disorder. But if you go um, to the brain, you know, in central, there are also uh, some nice data you know, that is linked to that. An inflammatory environment out there could be uh, associated with alteration in glia. And then I will show you. This is a really nice study from Ha in molecular psychiatry. That what it is a post-mortem study. Uh, they found that there is um, an activation of microglia uh, and astrocytes in bipolar patient compared to control. That is a study that, you know, measure the glial cell, the density, and the prefrontal cortex in bipolar patients. You know, that is a, a really small sample, but look that it's about number of glial cell compared to control. Then 19% of glial cell density re reduce in sublayer of prefrontal cortex, in sublayer 3C. Also, the oligodendroglia density in the prefrontal cortex that is, uh, you know, uh, significant different in bipolar disorder. The number of oligodendrocytes, you know, look here, and this by sublayer A, B, C in the prefrontal cortex, and it's quite different if we, we compare bit, uh, among layer and 
controls in bipolar disorder in red. Then just to summarize, for example, if you got a um, patient in first ep episode, there is a neuron damage an activation of microglia, but the synaptic adaptation, the pruning, it, it remains, you know, it doesn't change a lot. But thinking about multiple episodes, several episodes and later, you know, there is a dysfunction in this pathway, and then could be a transient, tra transient dem demyelination, okay, an astrocyte dysfunction, and there is another cycle, a neural damage. Now the neuron is, you know, it's uh, quite difficult to recover. And the systemic toxicity that we already talked, this is the, the small circles, it's uh, inflammatory uh, markers like interleukin, the, the on green is neurotrophic, okay? And then could be implicated the periphery, why where? Then Flavio and the group develop a staging model, but is that is a, a staging latent stage that people at risk, for example, mood and with mood or anxiety symptoms without criteria for bipolar disorder. In stage one, well defined defined periods of eutemia. The second uh, stage, stage two, symptoms in inter episode periods are mainly related to comorbidity, but they are there. Let's think about subsyndromal. In stage 3, there is patient with marked impairment in cognition and functioning and 4, uh, enabled to live autonomously due to cognitive and functional impairment. If you think about, uh, let's go back to clinic, um, I, I tried the rheumatoids. Stage 1, patient start with pain in, in jo joint and take some anti-inflammatory, it's okay. Stage two, there is, we need two anti-inflammatory and then there are also pain at night or when patient wake up. Stage three is quite difficult to, to walk, you know, but with um, a little um, to moderate help, patient function. But stage four, patients are in a wheelchair. Just to give an, an example. Then, that is patient that the real life um, patient with few episodes, 53 years old. It's uh, and then there's multiple episodes in 59 years old. Also, if you take a look in the prefrontal cortex, you know that is kind of different from that patient. We could think about that. This patient also respond, you know, different when. Uh, the accumulate episode. That uh, study of Swan showed that patients with more than 10 episodes, look that here is on blue, it's placebo, the valproate in rose, and this is violet, I think, this is lithium. After 10 episodes, you know, patients start, you know, the, the response to treatment really decreased significantly. And, you know, and also the decrease the improvement of symptoms. Just to illustrate, thinking about that, about functioning, Adriana Rosades is also in our group, published that nice paper about functional impairment in bipolar patient with first episode and multiple episodes, and follow that uh, small cohort for one year. And then what do we see? It's based in functional assessment short tests, it's fast score, and the total score of that scale looked at. It's different in the overall function, and autonomy, occupational functioning, cognition, financial, uh, interpersonal relationship, and leisure. Th that means there is functional impairment in bipolar disorder compared with patient with first episode and patient with multiple episodes. This is a paper that come last month in Journal of Clinical Psychiatry from Adriana Rosa also. Look that there is a, a nice correlation with FAST and then a group, a control group, a stage one that you remember based on that model of stage, stage two, three, and four. And if you see, based on, on the total FAST score, there is a functional impairment. 
If we measure the subdomains of fast, well correlated, uh, for example, with cognitive, look that, it's real nice correlation. In that, for example, I, we got, let's uh, get that example, verbal learning and memory. And then uh, we see the patient in late stage, for, uh, based on our model, three and four, that is uh, a decrease in, uh, really a decrease in, in neurocognitive performance. Then, let's think about staging and why that proxy that is well published by STEPID, by Ida Grande in a quarter of Spain now, considering th th theoretically proxies of staging. It's mood episode, illness duration, age at onset, and also there is a study with, uh, from, by Ida Grande from Spain that measure, consider that functioning based on, on a cutoff um, above 11 uh, for, f the, the, for function, cutoff of fast, total fast. I take a look and thinking about why is staging in outpatients bipolar disorder in France? I know very, very well that quote that in here in, in, it's supposed to be in remission, stable patient. Then I just put, assume that that proxy is important for a stage. If you, for late stage, we consider that you, 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 you should have the four proxies. Illness duration more than 10 years, more than 10 episodes, and that more than 10 is by a, a, analysis, a sensitive analysis, by a rock uh, curve. Um, above uh, 11 on functioning, based on total fast score, and also age at uh, less than 21, based on the criteria that's well published also by our colleague Bruno Etan. Then the really early stage patient, we have only 66. Because early stage, they, they don't have no one of the proxies, zero P, zero proxies. So just, you see our patients, they have two proxies, but you know, there is thinking about uh, uh, CRP that we have. What do we see then? We see correlation uh, really significant in the domain, the, the total score of FAST that is not here. Uh, in cognitive domain, okay, in professional activities and also in leisure time. For 743 patients, you know, whole the sample, they got three clusters. That cluster based on um, a score of emotional reactivity from Matisse. This is a scale that is measured in a dimensional way, approach, uh, emotional reactivity. And that in blue, in, in blue is the, the normal reactivity based on the, the, the cutoff of Matisse. So this is the, the hyperreactive patient that, that is, you know, low emotional reactivity and this is the hyper is 68 if you don't see that uh, small cluster they, they, they run a, a comparison of, uh, about um, the three clusters measuring CRP levels what do we see that in the hyper reactivity there is a different a, a really um, significant difference if you compare for the normal and the, the um, hypo reactive we have, I really reinforce that we are working with a stable patient based on the criteria that uh, categorical criteria, criteria from DSM and ISBD that is International Society of Bipolar. That is important to see. All patients are in remission, but you know, they function different, they, they, are, they are different. When you open, for example, in a cluster analysis and then you run comparison, comparison on biomarker. Okay, we talk about markers, we talk about pathways, how to measure that? We don't have, you know, uh, refinement to do that. But also it's important because we know that, for example, we are talking about subsyndromal patients and they have, for example, biomarker um, uh, altered, they have uh, perception. Then we have to think about, come to episodes. There is an episode variation by ear. For example, let's consider depression, manic depression. But if you go specifically, you take a look in symptom variation. 
more and about two weeks we have a patient that you know it's stable in face uh, cohort uh, sensor expert and we see pay, um, after three weeks but that is a kind of you know we don't know and also momentary variation maybe with that kind of let's think about stress for example there is a variation in my mood or that is correlated you know with my behavior we don't know because we don't have also how to measure that but I will come back with, uh, to cardiology. Think about hypertension. When you have hypertension, we, we don't feel that you are sick, we don't feel nothing. And sometimes your blood pressure increases at night, you are sleeping. But we know that that uh, alteration you know, could be implicated in renal disorders, you know, in the vascular disorders and also in uh, uh, brain uh, vascular disorders. Just to give an example, why we are talking about that in psychiatry? Then we could, today we measure things with low resolution and we, we, it's difficult to get that high resolution, you know, specific intensity. If you open that thing, for example, that is an event, rose stress, that is a reaction. That is thinking about 24 hours, you know, like you put, for example, a halter in cardiology to measure your uh, blood pressure. And if you get, you know, um, a combination of sleep measures, activity that includes where you are, what you were doing, okay? Symptoms, that is mood symptoms, and we measure five times a day. When patients wake up, they uh, answer a questionnaire, you know, that is come in a different tool that maybe could give us new pathways also to include in the station that is mobile technology and then we are starting uh, working on that that is the, the where is the questionnaires about mood about sleep about uh, activity there are then we could give for example more pers uh, personalized uh, feedback for our patient you know seven days one week you have all this measured like an index like we do in cardiology just and then we come back to staging. To consider only category, now it's coming different approach that we, we are kind of limited. But linking stage models with optim optimally tailored therapy that we are trying to think about uh, another tools also to include how to measure that uh, <coughs> things. Investigate details of intermediary stage that is specific from our work here in France that we're working with a stable patients, then we are in this intermediate stage. And how many additional stages are optimal? We have also focused on transformational, is the mathematical, logarithm improvement. We have to, to, to get better tools. And it's local and global efforts to improve stage in psychiatry. That is, we are the, the main goal, the main variable that we are considering in our work every day. <coughs> then I would like to thank you, whole molecular psychiatry group in Brazil, and also here. And finally, and especially for um, Professor Marion Leboyer, that is our director, uh, for your example, to be the enthusiasm and the force to, you know, to push psychiatry uh, in France to, to, to help people. Thank you.